Okay, well it's 7 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead, go ahead and get started here in just a moment. Welcome for the month of July. We're going to be doing testimonies. Tonight we're going to be starting off with Harrison and Haley Waldron. They are prepared and eager to go. They're very excited. But before they start, before Haley gets up and starts, and Harrison, we're glad he was able to join us, I want to start us off with a word of prayer. Will you bow with me? Dear God, we're so thankful for individuals in our lives that can show us courage and show us your love and show us faith. You've given us many examples throughout the Bible and loved ones that we know and love uh, that just show courage and show strength and show us how to, to deal with unplanned events in our life. We're thankful that tonight we get to hear from Haley and hear from Harrison and just see how their walk has detoured but how they're taking on a new path with, with dignity and strength. We pray that you'll be with us tonight as we listen. We pray that you'll bless all of us as we take away something that just encourages us and strengthens us and maybe brings us closer to the Waldron family that we can just consider them closer friends than we did before. We pray that you'll be with them, be with the Smiths, be with the Waldrons, be with everybody that cares for this family. And we're thankful for this church that has stretched out their arms and shown so much love to them as well. Be with us throughout this week until we can come together again. But help us to worship you every day and not just wait for days of worship at Tuscan. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we start, I want to ask everybody to mute or turn off your cell phones. We are recording this, and so this recording will be available to everybody that wants to use it, but we want to make sure that we don't hear Rocky Top or some other song come over the, come over the uh, sound system that we're recording. So with, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Haley Waldron. All right. Um, am I on, everybody? Good? Everybody hear me? All right, awesome. Um, well, my name is Haley Waldron, as Greg said. And I will kind of be speaking on behalf of Harrison as well. Um, I wish you guys could hear him speak because he's a really great speaker. Um, but right now, we're not doing talking, <laughs> so that's tough. But um, he has prepared a few things that I'm going to relay for him. So um, I also want to start off by saying just thank you so much to everyone here who has supported us and loved us throughout the past couple years and before that. Um, and we just appreciate y'all so much, and really we look forward to being with y'all every week. It's like the highlight of our week, so we, we're grateful for y'all. Um, I kind of want to start by going backwards, because I don't know if everybody knows who I am. I grew up at this church, um, born into this church, and so I had a childhood filled of a lot of you guys, uh, with a lot of encouragement from others to follow the Lord and be faithful and um, have my parents to thank for a lot of who I am. Um, they're just very sacrificial people. And I think if you know them now, you know that's still true. Um, and they just kind of taught me how to live a life according to God, and I'm very grateful to them and to a lot of you in this room. Um, so yeah, I grew up here and um, did a lot of stuff in the youth group, was very involved, and I loved it here, and it was really hard for me to leave. But um, went to Harding University in 2011, where I continued to grow in my faith and just kind of learned, like, who am I? I'm old now. <laughs> I have to be responsible. Um, <laughs> and that's when Harrison came in. We met our freshman year at Harding, and I really didn't want to date anyone. I was really over it. <laughs> you know how it goes. And, um, <laughs> but he just... I just thought, man, it doesn't get any better than Harrison Waldron. So we knew pretty quick that we were going to get married one day. We just didn't know when. And, uh, oh, I left my clicker somewhere. Is it in the, sorry, guys. I don't know where I put it. Well? Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. I don't think it is. Well, if there's any way to click, can you do it? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> That's us in college. <laughs> we don't look much different. Um, and I think you go to the next one, too. Yeah, okay, so 
May 31st, 2014, we finally got married. And we got married before we graduated college, so, you know, <laughs> against some people's judgment. But we were like, you know what? Well, our parents are really supportive. Um, you know, we just thought, we want to do this, and why wait and, you know, waste time, I guess, not being married. So we got married in May, and we finished out our senior year being married, and it was a blast. And looking back, I'm really glad that we got married that early so we could have a good year and change of <laughs> being like normal married people <laughs> before our lives kind of turned upside down. Um, it was a wonderful time. So when we finally graduated college in 2015, so a little over two years ago, we moved back here to Nashville. We came back to Tusculum. We t started teaching the three-year-olds, <laughs> which like for me, I'm not good with kids, but Harrison is like the best children's teacher. But that was really fun. And we were kind of getting, uh, like integrating ourselves and getting acclimated again after so many years gone. Um, so I guess you can go to the next one, Alan. In August, oh, that's just a picture of Harrison before he got hurt. Um, in August of 2015, Harrison and I were both going to be in a wedding in New York State. So we drove up there, and I, <laughs> I felt concerned because I've always been scared, like, we're going to get in a wreck or something, whatever. <laughs> but once we got there, I was like, we're good. Like, we can have fun now. I don't have to worry. Um, but it was right after the rehearsal, and we were about to eat dinner. And I was with the bridesmaids, and Harrison was with the groomsmen, and just doing whatever. And uh, he, I didn't know this, but he got on an ATV that they had out. And um, somebody came, and they ran to me and got me. And they were like, Harrison's hurt, and I don't know. Kind of blurry now, but I just remember running down to find him, and um, he was unconscious. So I was like, that's not good. <laughs> um, didn't know what that meant yet. But um, over the next, like, what felt like three hours, what was probably like 20 minutes, I talked to a lot of, you know, like, emergency medical people. And um, one in particular said, he has a really bad head injury. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, what's really bad? And she was like, it's really bad. So I was like, this isn't good. Um, so he was actually life lighted to a nearby hospital in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I followed along in a car. And I just remember thinking, like, this isn't real. Like, how can this happen? Like, this stuff doesn't happen to me, you know? Like, this happens to other people. <laughs> um, it was really hard to grasp at the moment. And sometimes still is. <laughs> but um, got to the hospital, and the doctor said, you know, if he was any older, I wouldn't operate on him. Like, this is a really bad injury. It got some of his brain stem. That's really bad. So, and he said, I'm going to do this surgery to relieve some of the pressure in his brain, but I'm really not hopeful. And that was obviously really crushing um, to hear him say those words. But I just thought, you know, this is the time we need to be praying. You know, if, if God's going to do something drastic, this is the time. So uh, I had a few of my friends with me, and we just kind of circled up and prayed for Harrison and for God to spare his life. And we prayed for God's will to be done, you know, like just trying to find anything to bring us comfort and to try to help Harrison. So... The good thing was he survived the surgery. I wasn't sure if he would. And when I finally got to see him, he was in, uh, you know, neuro ICU and really bruised and swollen. And um, I remember the nurse telling me, like, just don't touch him very much. Like, it'll overstimulate him, you know. And it was just crazy because, like, a few hours later, I was, like, messing around with Harrison, like, you know, just giving him a hard time about something, you know, just playing with him and whatever, getting on his nerves. <laughs> and now I'm like, I can barely touch him. You know, like it was just really drastic. It just happened so quickly. And so um, kind of continued that way for a while. And um, But I decided because, you know, 
Harrison lived and this doctor did this procedure to help him live, like, let's give him a chance to wake up, you know. So we didn't know what was going to happen. And through a lot of, like, different hospitalizations, you can do the next slide, I think, um, we had to go to, like, a, a long-term acute care facility and that was bad. ICU, all that good stuff. Um, and people would come and visit us and pray for us, and it was such a huge encouragement during that time, because um, that's all we had was just the church and prayer and, you know, just wondering what God was going to do and when he'd wake him up. Um, and I really had to learn to take it one day at a time. I'd never done that in my life, I don't think. <laughs> Even though you try, like, just take, you know, today's trouble is enough of its own, whatever. No, I didn't really learn how to do this until my day literally had enough trouble that one day. So <laughs> I had to learn how to do that. And I would celebrate every night with a pint of Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm not like 200 pounds, whatever. <laughs> um, but I just, I really did celebrate every day going home. I made it through another day. Harrison made it another day. But it was also another day he wasn't awake yet. So as the days passed, uh, you know, we got more and more anxious about him not being awake yet. Because if, if you don't wake up, you know, after like three months, it's just kind of slim chances. So um, finally in November of 2015, so it had been just a little over three months, he, we started, you know, he did some things that were indicative of him being aware enough to communicate and like, manipulate objects like picking up a pen or whatever. So that was really good. But the hard thing was he wasn't awake the way we thought he was going to be. <laughs> he, we thought he'd, you know, like the movies, like wake up and be like, hey, what's up, guys? I've just been in a coma for a little bit. Uh, it didn't go like that, and it doesn't really go like that. So don't let those movies lie to you. But um, <laughs> he woke up and couldn't do much. Um, and that was really tough. And, you know, during that time, too, I just had to completely rely on God because I could do nothing, and Harrison could do nothing, and we just had to say, Lord, like, whatever you're going to do, like, we trust you. And that's really hard to do as well. <laughs> um, but when you can't do anything else, that's just where you go, you know? And I also had to learn that my fear could really be debilitating. Like if I was afraid, I would spend all my time obsessing about all the things that could go wrong or all the ways that Harrison could turn out. Um, but I realized if I was truly faithful that I knew God was going to bring us through this um, and he was never going to leave us. And so I really battled with that for a long time, like being fearful and saying no, let my faith overcome my fear. Um, but that's something I learned in those few months that he was asleep too, which was great. <laughs> Still using that today a lot. Um, but finally he woke up, and can you go to the next slide? I think, yeah. He uh, <laughs> opened his eyes little by little, um, and he started doing things like thumbs up and um, like hitting yes and no on a whiteboard communicating with yeses and nos. So that was really amazing. And one day, um, the speech therapist came in and she said, um, I'm gonna try this new program. It's like an iPad and let's see if he can like type, you know? And I was like, I don't even know if he can read, girl. <laughs> like, whatever. So I was, I remember I was just like on my phone in the corner, like whatever, I don't even believe this. And she said, Harrison, why don't you try and type your name? And I hear H-A-R-R, -R, and I was like, no way, dude can spell. Like, what? <laughs> I was so excited. And then the next part of this was just like, probably the best day of my whole life after getting baptized and getting married. Um, he typed, I love you to me. And I was like a little puddle on the floor, for real. There's a video. Mom needs to like release it to the world because it's pretty crazy. Um, and then he said, um, what did he say? Oh, he said, I've been waiting such a long time to tell you that. 
And I was like, what? <laughs> it kind of was the, my first inkling into his mind for the past three months that he was actually able to hear us the whole time. And he was aware enough to know what was going on but couldn't communicate with us. So, which is very rare um, to be that aware of your surroundings and stuff while you're comatose or whatever. So that was really amazing. Um, but that was kind of a time when I knew, okay, we're gonna shift a little and go a different direction. Like, I don't have to do this by myself anymore. I have my husband back with me at least enough that he can type with me and communicate with me, which was huge. I remember saying, God, if you'll just please let Harrison like be in this with me. I know we can get through it, you know, but being by myself was really tough. Um, so we went through the um, inpatient rehab program at the Shepherd Center, which is behind me, um, in their little garden. And then after that, we went home January 27th, um, which was <laughs> kind of terrifying <laughs> because I was like, okay, our life is completely different and we're gonna go home now and figure out how to live <laughs> in our new life. But Shepherd was great. They had a lot of programs we had to go through to like, you know, reintegrate yourself into the community. Like, they taught me how to, you know, feed Harrison, do medicine, all that good stuff. Um, everything I needed to know. So they were awesome at preparing us for that. Um, but you know, we were scared because we were facing a whole new uncertain life and thankfully, my parents, as I told you, very sacrificial, as they've always been, were like, okay, y'all are gonna move into our house, we're gonna like redo our downstairs, we're gonna put in this roll-in shower and like make a bedroom. <laughs> I'm like getting emotional, because like that's amazing. And um, they just took us right in and all of our, <laughs> all of our needs. And um, so thankful for that. And so, that's kind of how it started out. We just were trying to figure everything out and take care of Harrison, and it was such a messy time for like a while. Um, and we started, you know, finding like treatment options in Jackson. Like I've, uh, maybe some of you have seen, we've been in Jackson a lot um, doing some treatments and, you know, started doing some therapy um, around town at Vanderbilt and stuff. And so we kind of settled in a little bit to this new life, which is like a lot of therapy and um, lots of rest, which is cool to me. Um, <laughs> so kind of what, where we at, are at now is, because I'm sure a lot of y'all are like, what do y'all do all day? Do you just sit around? No, we don't. Um, <laughs> we get up pretty early and let, Harrison's kind of the boss. It's like if he's tired, we don't get up as early, but we do a lot of therapy and it's just me and mom especially doing all his therapy with him. And um, we do like standing up in this cool standing frame. He has a bike that he rides for miles and miles. You know, all this kind of stuff, swallowing, all this stuff. So we do a lot of things during the day, all on top of just trying to like live and like get groceries and stuff. So we stay actually really busy. Um, and I'm really grateful to my mom because she had to make a really hard decision about a year ago to quit her brand new job um, at Centennial High School to kind of help me do all this therapy. I think if I just had to take care of Harrison and just make sure all his needs were met, I could do it myself probably. But um, because mom and me feel so dedicated to doing all this therapy with him daily, she was like, you need two extra hands. So I'm so grateful for that, like wow. Because that helps me and Harrison live more abundantly, you know, and, and it's gonna help us in the future. Kind of the more we can help him now with therapy and stuff, the better off he's gonna be down the road. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and obviously this time, I feel like the last year and a half that we've been back at home, I feel like we just kind of got settled into our really nice routine. Like, I, we, we're pros now, you know, <laughs> we're really good. Um, but there's obviously a lot of uncertainty, you know, mom's not working full time, I'm not working, <laughs> and I was supposed to start my master's in counseling therapy um, in August of 2015, so <laughs> uh, didn't get to do that, and I was just laughing to myself because they gave us like an exit survey the day we interviewed, and they were like, is there any reason 
you guys wouldn't be able to come in August. And I was like, no way, man. Like, I'm going to be here. <laughs> and I ended up being like, sorry, can't come. My husband's really hurt. Um, <laughs> so it was kind of interesting. So I remembered being like, I'm doing this. But um, had to kind of give that up, put that on hold. And I really was putting it on hold for a while. But I decided, because of where we are now, and kind of Harrison needing a lot of my help still, and probably for the long haul, I decided that I eventually will try to go to nursing school um, so I can have a little bit more of a flexible schedule. But even that is so uncertain. I don't know when to start that, you know, whatever. Um, so school's up in the air, job stuff. Um, obviously, my mom had to sacrifice a lot, and her job's up in the air. So we have a lot of uncertainty, which can be very stressful and cause a lot of anxiety, but I gotta go back to taking it one day at a time <laughs> um, and just solving the problems that present themselves each day. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot <laughs> every day. Um, and I'm grateful to have my family who are they're will so willing to help me make those decisions and figure out what we need to do. I'm so grateful. Um, and, uh, you know, other uncertainties is like, will me and Harrison ever live alone? I would really like to, <laughs> you know, like, uh, how are we all going to figure that out? So our lives, basically what I'm saying is, our lives are not what we planned at all. Um, he and I wanted to go into the mission field. He's like a third generation missionary, or he was. Um, and we really wanted to do that, felt passionate about that. Um, you know, want to have kids, all the normal stuff that people do. We wanted to do that. And now it's kind of a giant question mark. Um, and I know that's really hard for Harrison and obviously just kind of tough. But we decided, you know, all we can do is surrender to this plan that God's laid in front of us. Because the truth is that God did let this happen. I don't think he caused Harrison to be hurt. Um, but he let it happen. Um, I, and Harrison has said before, the reason he is hurt is not because of God. The reason he's hurt is because we live in a very chaotic, messed up world because of sin. And um, bad stuff just happens, you know? <laughs> that's kind of like my life motto. I'm like, that's life, you know? Like, um, kind of laughing it off, but it's tough, you know? Suffering and hurting is not fun, and we were never supposed to do that. We were not meant for this hurt and this suffering. Um, but once again, because sin entered the world, here we are. And so, you know, you can either, I, I always tell people you got two options. <laughs> you can like lay in your bed and curse God and say, I'm not doing anything, I'm not getting up today. Or you can get up and do your very best and you can just let God provide the rest, you know, kind of meet God halfway there. Um, so we, Harrison and I feel like we want to surrender to God's plan for our life and do the best we can with what we've been given. Um, even though, you know, this is not what we wanted. Um, sometimes people ask me if I'm ever like, why God did you let this happen to us? Um, but, I don't know. That's kind of a question I don't like to ask because I, I don't know everything. I don't know what God's plans are for this in our life, you know. Um, <laughs> I used to think about me like, like an animal that you have. Like if I'm the animal and God's the owner of the animal, and he's like, you got to stay in your cage because you'll get hurt if you get out. You know, like, you don't, these animals don't know everything. Like, I don't know everything. And I'm like, I just got to trust. Like my little hamster just got to chill out and trust me <laughs> and know that I'm trying to protect it or whatever. And so I have to remind myself that I, I don't know everything, but God does, and God has a plan. Um, and we really believe that the truth is God loves us so much. Um, we've always, from the beginning of this process, just know that God loves us and we're going to be okay and he's taking care of us every step of the way. Um, he's got great plans for us on earth as well as in heaven. Um, and that's exciting to me, even though it's not the way we thought it would be. <laughs> um, Harrison, this is something he typed out. He was kind of struggling, being really stiff. He said, God is good, 
and has done great things for us throughout this long and difficult journey. And I was like, you're so right. When we look back on all the blessings God has given to us, um, I wrote a few down. It's really been amazing to see all the ways that he's chosen to bless us through this process. Um, he's given us a lot of new friendships that are just wonderful, um, especially with people like in Jackson, because we were there for probably like four months total and kind of feel like we have a whole new family in Jackson as well. Lots of good friendships. Um, we feel like we've been blessed with deeper faith, obviously. Um, having to go through this process has really challenged us in a lot of ways and helped us understand a lot of things better. Um, I also feel like we have strengthened our relationships with our family, with people in our church, and with each other. I feel like our marriage is stronger in a lot of ways, um, which is really wonderful. And we also feel like we have a platform now to share the way that God works in our lives, um, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I never thought I would be like up here talking to y'all or anybody. And now people call me like, can you come speak at this ladies' day? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm only 24. I don't, that's not what I do. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you feel like God calls you to some, something, you got to do it. You don't want to end up like Jonah, you know. <laughs> so um, here I am speaking now. <laughs> that's what I really compare myself to. I'm like, I don't want to make God upset with me. I better do what he says, you know. <laughs> Take every opportunity to share his word. So there you go. Um, and that's been pretty cool. That's like a whole new, you just opened up a lot of opportunities for us. So I'll be looking forward to the day when Harrison can speak and he'll be the one up here talking to you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, back to my little notes here. Um, like I said, or like Harrison said, God has blessed us throughout this entire journey. And another way he's done that is he has given us every need, like he's fulfilled every need we've had before we even knew we needed it. Um, whether it be financially or like having, needing a place to stay or you name it. Um, it's been so amazing. So that's kind of another reason that I'm like, I'm chill because God's got it taken care of, you know, like it's all good. Um, and he's, I feel like, kind of helped expose new gifts in us we didn't recognize in ourselves. Um, like, I just think that God kind of made me to be a faithful person. Um, and I don't think I realized that until now. But with that, I realized if God made me to be faithful and to be on this earth and use my gift, then he's going to present me with situations in which I can be faithful. And I was like, well... <laughs> This is like the mother load, thank you, <laughs> you know? Um, but I thought that was pretty cool. You know, so all day long, I just think about these things like, and just learn new things and understand things I didn't think about before, which is really cool. And one of these is um, like the eternal impact of suffering. I asked uh, one of my spiritual mentors, I was like, so I understand like suffering makes you a better person or whatever, or like, <laughs> you know, if you suffer, you're more like Christ and all this. But I didn't think about the eternal, um, like, good things that would come out of that, you know? I was kind of thinking about how it could help me here. Like, I can reach out to people and help other people and, you know, speak about what God's done in my life. But um, here we go. Uh, and James, count it all joy, my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance or steadfastness, and let the perseverance have its full effect, that you may be, perful, or may, you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And I was thinking about why God lets some of this stuff happen to us, and our goal from being created till forever is to be more like God and to be unified to Him in, in His glory and uh, be up in heaven with Him and be more whole and complete. And I was thinking, man, I'm already starting this process now. We are, we are all starting this process already of being, becoming more like God. And that's so exciting um, and kind of helps me feel like my suffering 
and our life is more purposeful, um, even for eternity. So that's been really cool. Um, and obviously, as well as like helping other people through our situation and bringing them to Christ, Harrison has always said, you know, I want to point people to Christ, like through this. I want, when people see us, I want them to see Christ. I want to point people to God. And I think you've done that really well, Harrison. Um, and one question I had from someone was how our purpose has changed or, you know, how we find meaning in our lives. And at first I was like, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> we feel more like a calling to spread our story and God's love through it and all this. But as I thought about it, I was like, well, really the day that we gave our lives to Christ should have sealed our purpose right there, you know? Our purpose is to, you know, point people to Christ and try to get some people to heaven with us. Um, but I think, especially being so young and having all these plans that kind of are more worldly, like wanting to be successful in our jobs and um, wanting to have like the nice house and the dog and all that good stuff, um, kind of clouded what I feel like we truly should want and should truly be our goals and our drives and our purpose. Um, so it's been interesting too to have all of that taken away from us. Um, it has helped us see that that was really what was clouding our vision for um, our true purpose, which is to serve Christ and to live a life that would show others his love. Um, so, uh, and I think I added this because whatever. I put, sometimes people look at us and just pity us because our life is so different and we're not normal and we're 24 years old and we can't do normal 24-year-old stuff. But, and it's tempting to be like disappointed and I sometimes feel like a failure because I don't have a job yet and stuff like that. <laughs> or like haven't been educated more yet. But when I see us now, I see more success than I envisioned for us two years ago. It's just kind of different. It's, um, it's just that we've remained faithful in our suffering and I feel successful on an eternal level. <laughs> so it's, it looks different and it looks sad, but we really have gained so much advantage um, from losing and hurting. Um, and so now, um, as we look ahead, there's obviously a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknowns, and th that can be really stressful, but as I look back on the past two years, I realize that, um, you know, God's always taking care of us and He's going to continue. And I, it really helps me not worry so much anymore. <laughs> so, um, just feeling really grateful that I have an assurance like that as I move through this life. And I want to share that with everyone and help them to see that we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to worry because we have a sovereign God who loves us so much and has plans for each of us. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm going to wrap it up. Greg? I'm going to do it all the time. Thank you, Harrison and Haley, for the prep you've put into this, for being willing to come here. We're going to open up the evening to questions. Haley can answer anything, and also Harrison has agreed to answer a yes or no if you have those as well. Let me bring the microphone to you, and don't speak up until we're on the mic, because we're recording this. So let's see a show of hands of who might have a question for Harrison or Haley. Haley, would you relate that incident where the <clears throat> people of the Jackson Church of Christ surrounded your your house, your oh, yeah. home. Can you relate that to us in more, sure. in more detail? Yeah. Um, so I didn't go into this because, I don't know, it, it's a lot of information. But uh, the, this church in Jackson, Tennessee called Campbell Street Church of Christ really took us in um, 
while we were in Jackson getting those treatments, they um, set aside their little house that their youth minister usually lives in and let us live there. They built a ramp, they brought in a hospital bed, all this stuff to accommodate us. And, um, every, and they fed us and everything else. And every day at four o'clock, they would surround our house and pray for us. And so we really got to meet a lot of people and grow in relationship with them through that. And it was just so amazing <clears throat> that they didn't even know us, but because of our bond through Christ, uh, we just instantly became family and we cherish so many of those friendships today still, yeah. I know the last thing that you guys want are more surgeries and things like that, but is there anything on the horizon in the future, maybe experimental treatments that you guys are going to have to move again like you did to Jackson or places like that? Yes. Um, we have kind of been putting this on the back burner a little bit, but one of our big time goals is to get Harrison to this rehab facility in Chicago. Um, it's the top one in the world. And they have a lot of amazing technology that will help him be able to like learn to walk again with more ease than he could do like here in Nashville. Um, and like grasping things and things like that. Kind of more advanced things. And that's why we're kind of waiting. And it may be that we actually go more than once. We're kind of discussing that right now and our, our, all of our options for that. While we're waiting for other questions, I shared this with you, Hattie, but a question that was posed to me prior to the evening was, the new limitations that Harrison has, has his sense of not necessarily hearing, but listening and observing heightened in a way that, that he may have expressed to you. Yeah, um, <laughs> you can't get anything by Harrison. You may think you can, because he's like looking over there, but uh, he, <laughs> he's very perceptive. Uh, he listens very well, because that's really all he can do is just listen and sort of observe. And he also expressed to me that he is a lot more compassionate uh, than he used to be, which I think is really sweet. Um, <laughs> he's always a, really the best person I've ever known, so, you know. But um, he, he was kind of like, eh, <laughs> hard, having a hard time sympathizing with people, but he feels like a lot more compassionate and sympathetic with others now, which I think is really cool. One other, there's also been a couple of bright spots where he's done a few things, where he said a few things, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Share those. Yeah, so I guess it was in November, he finally opened his mouth and he said, hey. <laughs> and it's, it's weird when he'll do something like that, it's like you cannot make yourself believe it um, because it's been so long that he's done anything like that. Um, so we almost couldn't make ourselves believe it. Um, and then he didn't say anything for a long time, and I guess it was like March or something, he said, I love you, which was really amazing. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it. Um, but that, sometimes that stuff, it'll just fire in the brain, and he'll say something, and then you don't have anything for a few months. <laughs> so it's a little bit uh, hard to predict. But we're moving that direction, which is really good. So. This is a hard question, but I would like for you to imagine what it would be like if you'd not been a Christian, and if Harrison had not been a Christian. Yeah. We saw a lot of people in our exact same situation who are not Christians, and the amount of despair that goes on anyway would be enough to drive someone to death. Like, it's terrible. <laughs> And if you don't have your faith to lean on and God to help you get through, I don't know how people do it. Because um, it can be really grueling, you know, at points. So we have imagined that, and I would not want to experience that. Hey, uh, I have a yes or no for Harrison. It's Adam. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, Harrison, have you thought about writing an article uh, whether it's on like a quarterly basis or maybe even a book or anything like that, now that you have the ability to communicate your thoughts in a way that we were unaware of for a few months. There we go. Yes. Yes, he has. Um, actually, Alan, can you go a few more to the 
There's a blog link. There we go. Um, back in, I guess, April or something of last year? I don't know. We, or it was in August. We co-wrote a blog um, all about like our challenges over the past year and our successes. Um, and that was so eye-opening. And it took us a long time to get Harrison's thoughts out. Uh, but it was really cool. And so if you want a more conclusive picture of the last year and a half, uh, that's a good place to go, haleywaldron.wordpress.com. And you can hear from Harrison on there from time to time. But yeah, we have talked about writing a book. Um, or just like, you know, I think Harrison really loves to write as well. And um, definitely want to do more of that stuff kind of as we move forward. It's a little bit difficult sometimes because if Harrison's real stiff one day, it's hard to type, but he, he really likes to do that, and I love it because I don't know every thought he has, you know, like I would before, so it's, it's cool. Are there any other questions? I'm going to hand the microphone over to Kerwin, and he's going to close us out, but let me stay in the room one more time and just make sure nobody else has anything for Harrison or Haley. No, it's not really a question. Um, I just wondered if you could talk about um, Harrison's level of cognition versus his bodily impairment right. so that people will have a little better understanding of that. Yeah, good point. Um, especially for you guys, since y'all are like our social interaction for the week, I think this is pertinent information. Um, Harrison's cognition is excellent. There has been nothing I've seen to make me think he doesn't know or can't put things together or can't empathize or whatever. He can do math, he can speak Spanish or type in Spanish. Um, he doesn't seem to be untouched in his cognitive, um, you know, stuff, which is really amazing because usually if you have someone whose body looks like this, <laughs> who can't move very well physically, usually the mental cognitive status is just as impaired. And we really believe that God preserved his cognition um, because it's truly mir miraculous. Oh, and I'll tell you some statistics, too, about him being live. He really shouldn't be. Um, his type of injury is the worst one you can get. Worst. <laughs> um, usually, people with this injury, only 10% will survive long enough to get to a hospital. And of those 10%, 4% ever wake up. So he had the odds stacked against him big time. And then usually all of those 4% who are awake have some serious cognitive deficits. So <laughs> that's kind of what we were faced with. Um, we didn't know all those statistics at the time, but we knew you know, people had said cognitive deficits, blah, blah, blah. So that's what we expected when he woke up. And to find that he is basically untouched cognitively is, I think, a miracle, so, yeah. And he, he really loves and appreciates when people kind of get down close to his face where he can see you and talk with him. Um, he loves that. Uh, I think it's tempting and awkward, and you just kind of want to be like, hey, Harrison, like, not going to really talk to you. We love you from far away. <laughs> but he really does appreciate when people can get down on his level and speak with him, even though he can't speak back. And people are always like, how do I talk to him? And I, <laughs> I got really good at this, because when he was in a coma for three months, <laughs> I had to just talk at him a lot. <laughs> um, but I s sort of just like told people, if you kind of like, if when you're writing someone a letter, you don't expect an, an immediate response. So I encourage people to kind of like, basically write him a letter if you want. You can literally do that and send it to us, or you could just talk to him as if he's not going to respond right away. So, but he really appreciates when people come and speak with him. So, any more questions? All done. Um, I just wanted to add a couple things. I know when we visited from them with them from time to time, mm -hmm. and it was neat to hear the stories about Harrison's typing because um, the most recent one that just. I, thought was so neat was he had a friend who was in physical therapy who had visited with him and interviewed him and 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 um, spent th Harrison spent three hours answering his questions 
And they tell me that when he types, he doesn't just want to type, but he wants to get the punctuation correct. <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes sure he types correctly, and it's just so <laughs> awesome. But I remember when you guys first came to meet with the elders um, and tell us about Mission Upreach. This was before you were married. Mm -hmm. And Harrison presented kind of their whole life plan. <laughs> and when they left, we were like, there's no way he's 19 years old, 20 or whatever he was at the time. It was like, he's just, he's lying to us. <laughs> this guy was so amazing and their plan was so neat. And it was before they were married and we were just, and, and you, you know what we've done with Mission Upreach since then. It's just, uh, but it was all because of, of him and, and you and your plan. And that was just so powerful to us. But um, we do want to pray. We, we pray, we haven't ceased praying about healing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll continue to do. So if you'd all bow with me, um, we'll, we'll pray uh, about these things. Father God, we do thank you so much for the, for the faith that's been shown to us tonight. Um, we do know that you've truly blessed um, Haley with the gift of faith and Harrison as well and their whole family. And we're thankful that they share that faith with us because it encourages us um, so much. And Father, um, I just want to pray uh, that you continue to give them that measure of faith so that um, they, unlike so many of us, can spend more time counting blessings than they can um, being sorry for themselves. I just pray that you'll help those blessings to continue, that you continue to give them a platform. And Father, we know that um, normally a 24-year-old wouldn't have such a platform or wouldn't even be listened to by many people, but you bless them with this story. And I pray that you continue to use them and um, just give them a continued story to tell, one that will change lives. And we're thankful that they've shared their testimony with us tonight. And Father, we're thankful that they've shared with us how you've uh, provided so much, whether it's been financially, um, whether it's been lodging or therapy. And Father, we continue to pray that you'll continue to provide um, just more glimmers of healing um, I pray that you'll help Harrison to be able to um, stand better and ultimately walk and ultimately be able to um, uh, participate in this advanced therapy in Chicago. Um, just continue to bless him and give him a, more of a story to tell, more lives to affect, um, and may we continue to just love on these people because we love them so much and we know that they're yours and that you're giving them this platform to share um, how much you mean to them and father may we share how much they mean to us by just um, wrapping our arms around them thank you for this evening and what it's meant to us and continue to bless harrison and haley tim and lisa and uh, uh, their parents uh, in honduras philip and Donna. yes mm -hmm. and we just thank you for the waldrons and uh, thank you for this chance to lift them up to you tonight we pray through jesus Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Let's just uh, just show our love.